This is Dale with Behind the Bench. Here we are at Iron World Tour Berlin. This morning we're talking with Dr. Dito Lenza of the Charity University Hospital here in Berlin. Dr. Hello. Lenza, Hello, thank Dale. you for the really great talk this morning. Thank you. I understand that you recently implemented next generation sequencing. Yes. And that you looked at um, known samples with Sanger mutations and that you went ahead and verified them with ion torn. Can you tell yes, me about that? that's correct, Dale. <laughs> uh, we started in June with the NGS workflow, so to move from Sanger to next generation sequencing by using the PGM. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, in order, uh, at first we have to get some assurance for the technology, so we analyzed about 50 samples that had been previously Sanger sequenced, and uh, with the colon lung version 2 panel and the cancer hotspot panel. And in every case, we could verify the uh, the Sanger based mutation by the PG by the PGM machine and uh, also um, in order not to totally uh, change at once we also had a parallel uh, two weeks of parallel sequencing Sanger and uh, NGS and uh, also in this phase uh, we confirmed uh, we there were no discrepancies between the two types of analysis so it was a hundred percent for yes, both situations in our hands, yes, yeah. and if i understand those first 50 samples had some tricky mutations in yes them, yeah? yes in order to be really sure that we uh, detect all um, uh, um, mutations we we selected uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms as well as quite complex egfr deletions mm -hmm. and uh, they were all detected by the pgm work and in the questions and answers afterwards, someone brought up um, as far as being able to do a lot of uh, different kinds of uh, other panels and other kinds of, uh, how do I say, uh, the limitations of Sanger really are removed because you're able to test for many genes at once. Yes, that's right. It, it really uh, makes the workflow easier um, because you don't have to do all these parallel PCR, single-plex PCRs. You do have one-tube one, uh, one PCR, of course, depending on the number of amplicons you are sequencing, and uh, then you uh, sequence in parallel. So the output is uh, really great. You have mm -hmm. all the uh, sequences of the mutations at in yes. one shot, so to speak. Now I remember. There was a fourplex PCR you used as a kind of quality control yes. for the DNA purification. Mm -hmm. You did mention some of the optimizations you did in your process for DNA preparation. Uh, it was a fourplex that you were able to test the quality of the library mm -hmm. by which it was correlated with the quality of the sequencing downstream. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yes, this quality control PCR was um, developed uh, several years ago uh, during a EU-funded project for in a totally different setting. It was mm -hmm. for clonality testing assays. And uh, since these are also very tricky assays, you, w uh, uh, you, you would really would like to qu quality control your DNA. And during this project, it was the Biomet 2 uh, project. Uh, they developed this control PCR, a fourplex PCR, uh, 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 with distinct amplic amplicons at 100, 200, 300, and 400 base pairs. And what I like about this essay is that you get a grading of the quality of your DNA, not only a yes and no answer yes. if you only have one amplicon, but you see is it 100, 200, 300, 400? And, and also the intensity of the different products give you an idea about the amplifiability of your DNA. Yes. And as you were saying, it, uh, it really matches with the, with the outcome of the sequences. Yes. Mm. And lastly, you use the sample ID amp yes. AmpliSeq <laughs> panel. It's the first time I've ever heard a customer yes. talk about that. Yes. And you mentioned it, it's a very helpful quality Oh, yes, check. indeed, indeed. Because uh, well, it, I mean, it, it's really chance, but uh, it happens and that you have a chip with uh, several s uh, several samples that show the identical mutation in almost identical allele frequencies. And if you see this uh, kind of chip, you, your first reaction is go to the technician in the lab and ask him what he did wrong with the, what he, why he messed up the DNA samples. But uh, in fact, it, it really, it, it's chance that gives you uh, these kind of chips. And when you have this, um, this uh, re reassurance by the, poly by the genotyping of the sample ID panel, it really uh, helps to, uh, to gain confidence in the analysis of these kind of chips. Yeah. So it, it, it's really a good, uh, a great uh, feature. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Thank you for your time this morning. You're welcome. Thank you. Follow all of our Iron World Tour activities at lifetechnologies.com forward slash behind the bench. And if you have any questions for Dr. Lenza, please feel free to leave them in the comments.